So today it's going to be a quick one. We're going to be talking about how to use the Koala sampler inside of Ableton. And this is uh, Ableton Live 12.1.1. Uh, uh, I have not had much luck using the sampler inside of uh, other DAWs. And it works a particular way inside of Ableton. So the first thing you need to do is actually download it from the App Store. So there's going to be a desktop version, and then there's going to be a plug-in version. So just go ahead and search Koala Sampler. It should come up pretty quickly. And then when you're looking at the different apps here, so you can see it came up right away right here. Uh, but there's actually another tab right next to it. So this is the desktop version right now. And then if we click right here, this is the version that we want. So it'll say, uh, yeah, it'll actually say not verified for Mac OS. And that'll be the one that we want to download because what we're doing is actually getting the iPad plugin version. And once you download that, you can go ahead and open Ableton and we'll jump over to that. So the first thing you want to do is go to your plugins, just type in Koala, and you have two options that pop up right here. All right. So this one is MIDI specific, and then this other one is for audio. So just like usual, just kind of like drag and drop, or you can put it on, you know, one of these other uh, tracks here. I think for now, I'm going to go like this and let's pull my microphone there so <clears throat> we have this as an audio source uh, just in case we need it we'll just call this uh box right here to enter so we have our two two samples uh two samples two tracks here so here's what it looks like and this is uh this is the uh auv3 version um, this is the one that comes in the plugin form. And there's a reason that that's really, uh, important to remember is there's iOS plugins and then there are desktop plugins. So AUV3 is actually iOS, all right? So that'll work on your iPad, work on your phone and things, which is fantastic for those devices. Uh, the one thing is that there is a memory limit, with this plugin, which I think is, I believe is 360 megabytes. I think that's what that is on, uh, on the iPad. So basically what that means is just don't use super long samples. Um, you should be fine. There's an option with this is you can press and hold and swipe up and you can record. I probably would not be doing that with this. Uh, but besides that, everything works pretty much the same. Um, you have all your, your pads here to, to record in these different places. You just tap them and incoming audio source will, will, uh, work there. Um, something that I haven't tried is actually dragging audio in. Can I do that? Unreadable send. Okay. So I think what you probably have to do is go to settings and... I'm kind of exploring this a little bit myself. So import from system, it looks like that's the, the way to go there. So if I go down to this bottom part here and click samples, um, and let's see, it looks like there's some already in here. Let's load that in. And it looks like that loads in just fine. So, you know, if we were gonna map this to a MIDI controller, you do have to do it inside of the app. Again, going to settings and you click here, you go to MIDI, it's right up at the top, right? And then click MIDI map. So we'll do that. And now all of these parameters in here, and it looks like, you know, even in these different spots are mappable. So in order to do that, you would just click and then tap on your MIDI controller and you can go through it and map pretty much everything uh, on each of these pages becomes mappable and uh, also something that you can uh, grab 
like kind of in the middle of a set without even opening this. The only thing that I have not been able to find is a way to do uh, paging, like to turn these pages that we have A, B, C, D at the bottom. Um, not totally a deal breaker for me. I'm not usually going outside of 16 samples, but it is, uh, it is something that could be useful if it's possible to do that. I have not found uh, options for that. But yeah, you can see you have, uh, Biddy can select pads. Let's see, what what is that? If this is on, then when you press a mini note that is mapped to a pad, it will select the pad. That's great. Those are, that's in order to play the, uh, um, to play the pads. Uh, pads send mini notes. Yeah, so it looks like I could probably do a little bit of exploring, um, but I have not found a way to turn pages. So if anybody figures that out, let me know. Um, so I'm gonna stop mapping and just kind of show you here. So one of the things is if you try to uh, say, send your audio to the Koala sampler, you know, essentially kind of taking the sound out of Vox and bringing it in here, there's not really a good way of doing that as far as I can see with the MIDI plugin, but that's maybe not what you're trying to do. Maybe you want to use the sequencer of things. Um, but if you do want a real time sample, you can go like this instead. So we go back over here and we go to the audio version. So this one, like if you were to drag it in here, uh, if you look up at the top, it opens an audio track instead of a MIDI track. So there's two of these, right? There's the MIDI version and then there's the audio version. Not exactly sure how that works in terms of the, the programming. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that one right there. And this one is uh, now open. So if I wanted to sample my microphone, um, I could actually just go here and grab the channel and hit record. And now there's sound coming in, right? So here's, let's just try my voice. So here's one, or here we go one more time. One, two, three, four. So let's see. One, one, one. Is it working? Yeah. One, 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 one. There we go. So that works really well. Uh, the way that I usually use this, though, is I'll actually create a return track so that I can get audio from multiple places at once and then just do a send. Um, so what that is, is since this is, if you look over here, this is on send C. So I would just go over to my voice here turn this up make sure that the sound is coming through um let's actually just do so let's do sends only just so that we're not doubling our audio there we go great so now if i turn up send c we should be receiving that audio right here which is all of our places have the same uh plugins on so it's hard to differentiate but you can see that i've selected uh, C right over here. So what's happening is, is when I turn this up, this is coming up and going into this track and then heads to our mains, right? So that comes, you know, that goes through here and then goes out the mains, uh, after I sample it. So let's, let's try that. So let's do this here, uh, different I'll do uh, different numbers. So we'll go four, five, six, seven, four, four, five, six, seven. And yeah. Uh, hey, hello, hi, how are you? Hey, hello, hi, how are you? And four. just like in the other, hey, uh, oops, well, four. four. Oof. Hello. Hello. Let's, let's go with hello. 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 Guess the uh, four is not very clear. Four. Hi. All right. And we can change the pitch. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? How are 
And yeah, this works the same way that it works on the iPad. Howry, Howry. Um, besides that, you can do your panning. Howry, Howry, Howry. And it's Howry, Howry. kind of awesome. And I mean, what is that? You can do your... Uh, I don't own that. Um, great. Yep, don't own that either. So all of the same features that are available on the iPad are also available uh, on the when you use the this AUV3 plugin on the Mac. Uh, the last piece is that if you're looking at, let's see here. Oops. Um, so if you're looking in the app store, uh, there's actually two versions of this that come up. So you'll look here and you'll see, uh, you'll see Mac apps. So right at the top here, you see, it says Mac apps. So that means that's the desktop version, right? So you'll have to go right next door and click here and then you'll see this is the version that we're using right now inside of Ableton. So if you, you know, if you want to try both, uh, you can download the desktop. Uh, I think the desktop version, the Mac version is free right now. Um, but I, I actually own the one on the uh, iPad, so I'm not sure if that's what makes the difference. Uh, but I didn't have to make a purchase. Uh, yeah, but if you can take a look, you see it says designed for iPad, not verified for Mac OS, which means if you use this, you may run into some issues for something that it's not designed for. Like, say, I tried to open this in Reaper and I was not able to do that without having channel issues. Um, it just the inputs didn't show up to bring audio in, but it was able to work with samples and do all of that. So if you don't need the real time sampling that you would get from using this audio plugin right here, um, the audio version, then it's exactly, you know, the same as you would normally use it. I use it for grabbing sound in the room as I'm, as I'm playing or as I'm working with, uh, different people. Um, and yeah, if anybody knows why that is, because what it seems like is that there's a discrepancy between these two versions. The audio version does not show up in Reaper, but the MIDI version definitely does. And maybe, you know, maybe that's like a naming structure piece, but uh, yeah, making a little tutorial here and maybe somebody will uh, pay it forward and make a tutorial on that. Uh, great, so that is what we got for today. That was the Koala sampler in Ableton. I uh, hope this was helpful, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.